Hi, my name is Ali Ben Fatoum. I'm a principal evangelist in the AWS IoT team, and I'm back again in the same school in which I made the video Build a Digital Twin using the Smart Territory Framework and AWS IoT Twin Maker, this time to show you how to leverage the Twin Maker and Matterport integration to create immersive digital twin experiences. I'm going to replace the 3D model I used in the previous video with an immersive and real-world model of the school and its classrooms. In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step step how to capture the space using the Matterport scanning technology, how to import this space into a TwinMaker scene, and finally, how to use the space in a web application that I'm going to build using IoT AppKit library. Links to the previous video and to additional resources are in the video description. So let's get going and start with the capture of the space. Matterport provides a variety of capture options, including capture services. To capture this space, I'm going to use the Matterport Pro 3 camera. So first, I need to download the Matterport application on my phone and sign in to my Matterport account. For more information about creating a Matterport account and download their mobile app, you can check the Matterport website. Once the application is set up and connected to the camera, I can start the capture. 15 minutes later, the space is captured and it can be uploaded to my Matterport account. From now, I'm going to use my laptop first to connect to my Matterport account and check that the space is uploaded and available. Note that it can take some time of processing before the space is available. Once it's available, I can select the space. When you select the space, you can extract the ID of the model from the URL. So let's record the model ID because I will need it later. Then I select Edit to edit the space and add tags. Multiple tags are annotations added to specific coordinates to call out features and information. So I just create one tag per classroom. And I'm adding a note to identify the sensor that is placed in each classroom. This will help me later in TwinMaker when connecting the tags to the environmental data. But before I can import the space and the tags to TwinMaker, I need to generate and record Matterport credentials. In order to integrate your Matterport assets into AWS IoT TwinMaker, you need to contact Matterport directly to request an integration with AWS IoT TwinMaker. You can use the Matterport and AWS IoT TwinMaker page to contact them so that they can provide you with guidance on the necessary components for enabling the integration. So I had requested the integration and I've got now all the necessary components enabled on my Matterport account so I can continue the integration process. The next step is to generate and record my Matterport credentials. I need an SDK key and a PME client ID and secret. PME, which stands for Private Model Embed Integration, is a Matterport solution to securely embed private models within your organization portals instead of viewing them in the Matterport cloud. So let's start by adding the SDK key. I set a name and confirm the creation of the key. I record the SDK key as I will need it later for the integration. Then I have to add the authorized domains to the key. The first one is for AWS IoT TwinMaker and the second one is for my web application. Then in application integration management, you should see your PME application listed with its credentials. These credentials are created when the PME is enabled for your account by Matterport. If these credentials do not appear, contact Matterport using the same contact form used to enable PME. Since the client secret is only presented to you once, we strongly recommend that you record your client secret. So let's reset it and then record the PME client ID and secret ID. With the SDK key and the PME client ID and secret ID, I've got now all the credentials needed. AWS IoT TwinMaker uses AWS Secrets Manager to securely fetch your Matterport credentials. AWS Secrets Managers enable you to centrally store and manage credentials, API keys, and other secrets throughout their life cycles. 
So I'm going to log in to my AWS account. This is the account I used in the previous video. So the SDF is already up and running. I've got a TwinMaker scene within a TwinMaker workspace with everything set up, including the component to fetch the data from the STF IoT data lake. So in the AWS IoT TwinMaker console, I choose settings, and then I select the tab third-party resources. I can find there a guide to the Matterport integration. And in step three, I select AWS Secrets Manager to open the AWS Secrets Manager console. I wanted to show you this section in the TwinMaker console, but obviously you can also directly navigate to the AWS Secrets Manager console. So once in the AWS Secrets Manager console, I navigate to the Secrets page. Then I select Store a new secret. For the secret type, I select Other type of secret. In the Key Value Pairs section, I add my Matterport credentials. Make sure to name the keys exactly as shown in this video. For the SDK key, the key is application underscore key, and the value is the Matterport SDK key. For the PME client ID, the key is client underscore ID, and the value is the Matterport PME client ID. And for the PME secret, the key is client underscore secret, and the value is the Matterport PME secret. For the encryption key, you can leave the default encryption key AWS slash secrets manager selected. Then I choose next to move on to the configure secret page. And I choose a name for the secret. Then I have to create a tag for TwinMaker to fetch the secret. The key of the tag must be AWS IoT TwinMaker underscore Matterport, exactly as it is shown in the video. The value field is optional. I can then select Next to move to the Configure Rotation page, and then Next again as I don't use Secret Rotation in that case. Finally, I select Store to store my Matterport credentials. So now I can select the secret. Refresh the page if you don't see it in the list of secrets. And then I record its ARN. I will need it later to update the permissions of the TwinMaker workspace role to allow it fetching the secret. Now back in the TwinMaker console, I select my workspace, I copy the execution role, then I navigate to the IAM console and I search for the execution role. I select it and I update the policy to allow fetching the secret. The action is secrets manager get secret value and the resource is the ARN of the secret. I save the changes and I can go back to the TwinMaker console. Now let's create a scene. I give it a name. I could update the scene used in the previous video, but let's create a new one so we can have both visualizations available. Then I go to the settings tab of the scene and in under third party resources in connection name, I select the secret I created previously. If you don't see the secret, make sure you properly tag the secret and that you have updated the TwinMaker workspace role with the permission to fetch it. Then in Matterport model ID, I enter the model ID of the Matterport space, the one that I recorded previously. And I select sync Matterport tags. And I should see now the space integrated in my TwinMaker scene with the tags I created. That's all good. I'm selecting the tags to attach the data I'm going to use the data overlays feature of TwinMaker. This will enable me to consolidate multiple properties like temperature, humidity, and CO2 level. So when I click on a tag, I can see all the environmental data per classroom. I had put a note about the sensor placed in each classroom, so I'm going to use it for data binding. I'm selecting for each property I want to display the entity ID, its component name, and the property name and I choose a binding name for each of them. Then in the markdown content, I will use the dollar sign curly braces syntax with the binding name of my property to embed its value. So when selecting this tag, my web application will display the value for each property added in the markdown content. We have almost everything set up to build the web application. 
In this web application, I'm going to use Amazon Cognito to authenticate and authorize users to get access to the Toolmaker scene. So the next step is to create a Cognito user pool and identity pool. I'm not going into details for this step, but you can find resources in the video description to learn more. So I created one user in my user pool, and now I have to give access to this user to the Toolmaker scene. So I navigate to the identity pools page, and then I select my identity pool. Then I select the user access tab. In the authenticated access section, I choose the authenticated role. It opens the role in the IAM console. If you don't see a role created in this section, you can create one from the console. I select the policy to add the required permissions. You can find the permissions needed in the Twinmaker documentation. The link is in the video description. Make sure to update the bucket name and the workspace ARN with yours. Then I choose next and I save the changes. All good, we have everything ready now to build our web application. In this video, I'm going to build a next GS application. You can follow the same step for any React-based application. I have prepared a web application with the Cognito authentication setup, so I can focus on the Twinmaker and Matterport integration steps. You can find the link to the code of the application I'm going to build in the video description. So in this application, after signing in, I can get the credentials to securely access my Twinmaker scene and fetch the data. Okay, I need now to install components from the IoT AppKit library. You can find a link to get started with the IoT application kit in the video description. Because we are going to use Matterport integration, I also need to add the static assets required for the Matterport integration. I can use the command npx matterport assets to add the static assets needed into my Matterport folder. Later, I will need to provide this path when loading the Twinmaker scene. I'm checking that I've got the Matterport folder with all the required assets in my public folder. All good. I can start now building the integration. I will create a React component that I'm calling Twinmaker scene. In this component, I will initialize the Twinmaker source. To do that, I will need to get the credentials from the user logged in. The initialization will provide me with properties that I will then pass to the scene viewer component to fetch the Twinmaker scene. Let's get going with the user credentials. In the application, I had created a custom hook that provides user credentials and a property to check if the user is authenticated. Now that I have access to the credentials, I can initialize the Twinmaker source. Because I'm building a web application using TypeScript, I'm going to create an interface that defines the type of properties I'll get from the initialization. So let's create this interface. I call it Twinmaker Data Props. There are basically three properties I need. The query property that I'm going to use to process Twinmaker time series data. Then the property S3 scene loader to fetch the Twinmaker scene. And finally, scene metadata module to fetch its metadata. All good, let's initialize now the source. I create a variable Twinmaker data. Its type is the interface I just created or null if the user is not authenticated. So I check if the user is authenticated. If yes, I return the initialize function. Let's import it from the Twinmaker IoT app kit library. I need to pass the workspace ID, the AWS credentials that are the credentials I got from the custom hook, and the AWS region. Okay, and if not authenticated, then I return null. Then I have to specify the query that I will send. So let's create a separate file with the name queries. I create an array of queries. For each, I specify the entity ID, its component name, and the properties I want to query. Then I go back to my Twinmaker scene file, in which now I can import the queries. That's it, I've got all I need to get my Twinmaker scene. This is done with the scene viewer component that I need to import. I only want to return the scene viewer component if the Twinmaker source is initialized. If not, I return an empty HTML tag. So now let's provide to the scene viewer component the required properties, starting with the scene loader, 
then it's metadata, the queries, the viewport that specifies the window over which to query the data. In my case, I want the last two hours. And finally, the external library config to specify the path to the Matterport static assets. I've got almost everything set up and ready. The only thing I need now is to import this Twinmaker scene component in my main page. And that's it. I can launch the application. And voila, you can see the Matterport scene displayed. And if I select the tag, I can see the value of the environmental data measured by the sensor in the classroom. Well, that's it for this video. We've seen how to leverage AWS IoT Twinmaker and Matterport integration to create immersive digital twin experiences. I covered how you can capture your space using a Matterport camera, how to integrate the space into a Twinmaker scene, and finally, how to build a web application to render the immersive space. You can find in the video description more information about the services and tools used in this video. And it only remains for me to thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful and that it will help you build immersive and stunning digital twin experiences.